Welcome back. In this skill, we're going to talk about joint immobilization. I got to tell you, when you hurt your joint, it really is painful. As I mentioned in some of our other videos, last fall, I went ahead and really did a bad sprain on my ankle. And it really took kind of 10 months for me to rehab that injury. So one of the things that you're going to find is you may have an injury to a joint and it may be a continual injury as you go through the rehabilitation process. One of the things we see a lot of is we see a lot of shoulder injuries, we see a lot of elbow injuries. One of the things that we want to be able to do is give quick care to try to minimize that pain and give that patient some sense of comfort. The first thing you want to do when you come to your skill station is you want to make sure you have the appropriate equipment. What we're going to do is we're going to use two triangular bandages for this station and of course you always want to make sure that you have your personal protective equipment. We never verbalize that we're wearing our personal protective equipment. We always want to make sure that we have it on and that we're ready to go. What we're going to do here is we're going to simulate that the patient has a left elbow injury. So the first thing that we want to do again, make sure you have your PPE. We want to go ahead and come up to the patient and really kind of get down on their level. We don't want to tower over the patient any time that we can. Always be down at that level. And what we want to do is we want to manually stabilize that joint so it doesn't move. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this joint in place with my hand against the uh, tricep muscle and I'm supporting the wrist as well. You want to check for circulatory pulses, you want to check for motor, and you want to check for sensory. A good acronym is CMS. The way you want to do that is you want to ask the patient, let me know when you feel me touching you. You don't want to say, can you feel that, can you feel that, because if they can't feel it, you're going to give them a little bit of apprehension as to why they can't feel you touching them. So let me know when you feel me touching your arm, can you wiggle your fingers for me, and you want to check for good pulses. At this point, your examiner is going to let you know that CMS is present and is normal. Really what you want to do now is you kind of want to pass this off to your partner that if they're holding manual stabilization, while well, you choose the appropriate splinting device. As I said, we're going to use two triangular bandages. Now it really, this is kind of an old school way of doing it. There's a lot of things that are on the market that you may have in your departments, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of use our triangular bandage. What we want to do first is we kind of want to open it up and at the back end of it we just want to go ahead and tie it in a knot. This is the triangle side of it. So you have the two long sides, you just want to go ahead and tie a knot in that long side. What this is going to do is this is going to act as your place where the elbow is going to go. Your partner is still holding manual stabilization. You want to go ahead and make sure that you secure the limb above and below the injury site. Try to be as gentle as possible and you want to go ahead and tie this around the patient's neck. One of the things that you may want to think about here is you're putting a knot here at the top of this triangular bandage. One of the things that you may want to be able to do is put some gauze up there to make it a little bit more comfortable. So now what you want to do is now that you have the, the kind of arm sling, now you want to go ahead and manually stabilize it. We take our next triangular bandage and we don't open it. What we do is we just kind of put it around the patient's shoulder, kind of go under their arm, make sure that we have a good position of comfort, and we want to go ahead and tie it down again. Always asking the patient how they feel. Is this uncomfortable? Do you feel a little bit more relief? Next thing we want to do is we want to reassess our CMS. Now remember, we had good CMS before we started splinting. If we now go back to the patient, if they've lost their pulses, if they've lost motor function, or if they've lost sensory feeling, we know that we've done a bad job with our bandaging. We need to take it all off and start all over again. So as we come back, we're going to check. Let me know when you feel me touching you. Wiggle your fingers, sir. 
Let me know when you feel me touching your arm. Wiggle your finger, sir. Check for pulses. At this time, your examiner is gonna let you know that CMS is present and normal. Now that you've been through the skill, let's take a look at the critical criteria for this skill. When you're participating in a skill evaluation, you will be given points for each of the steps of the skill that you complete. Note that failure to adequately complete any one of the critical criteria will cause you to fail that particular skill examination, regardless of your overall points scored. Go ahead and take out your National Registry skill sheet and follow along with me. Here's the critical criteria for this skill. Please remember that this video is intended to help you prepare for the National Registry Psychomotor Skills Examination and the approach may not exactly match protocols used in a different context. It's important, however, that you memorize each step of the skill in order. This way, you're able to demonstrate the skill to your instructor, preceptor, and evaluator.